So why are you quitting well? It's four years, man. I really don't like, this is something that like kind of bothers me about, um, about Preach, is that I don't like how if I go back in time, I can see Preach with like more and more and more hair. And like now he's bald. Right? Because then I can look at my videos from like five years ago, like four years ago, whatever. And I had a lot more hair than I do now. And I, I, I'm just fucking worried that what happens in four years from now? Maybe a little bit of that. Four years playing one goddamn game over and over again. I'm yeah. done with it. Skill, this, like, this expansion was so hard. That sucks. The guild died. Well, nearly died like three or four times. Yeah. People left and burned out. I mean, it's a raid all the time. Yeah. So not even another expansion would bring you back to WoW. Well, what's it going to be? More levels, more zones, more raids, same shit over and over and over again. There's a lot right. of people that thought you like that too. that Arthas is in the next expansion. Fuck. Yummy. Hey. What's going on? Mario Kart. Let's do it. Let's do it, right? <laughs> no longer your weapon fields. Not today. I love these videos, man. They're just so they're so funny. Did you truly expect Why to fulfill the brain's task? Oh, the Witch King's in the baby's toys. That's perfect. What's up with you? <laughs> Should we just go and get Wrath? Hey! Hey, come on, big guy! That's come right, on, dude. Let's go and get Wrath. That cheer you up. Fine, so Arthas was on our brains and we had to go and buy all the Wrath of the Lich Kings. I think we actually got five, but you took your copy home, mate. I did, mate. Looking back, though, memory lane, boys. That's the one I bought to join Method. 18 quid cash. Oh, to be so, play on EU, of course. In every cut scene ever. I guess, I think he already plays on EU, never mind. It's my quarter, Forgot. TBC's ending was soul crushing for many. The enormous drought of content since the Black Temple and the Sunwell was just too much. And as the sun set, on we had the Isle of Quadanis. Player fatigue was evident. While was I like that. Subs. In fact, it was still like rising. The Isle of far more Fuck yeah, dude, that was before. amazing. Who knows it was only how good because it was the first one. Legend was in the making. Perhaps Trash. it was on the roadmap for years. No, but Five Shot had some good this PvP is the there. This story everyone had been hoping for since WoW itself was announced. Cliche as the Arthur story is, who cares? This yeah. is the story that hooked millions of people to the Warcraft universe. Can you imagine what it must have been like to sit there at BlizzCon 2007, knowing a new WoW expansion is about to be announced? To be there for that one historical moment I was there. of having Arthas appear on screen? I that wasn't, level but... of excitement? Well, I imagine it would have been cool, mate, if everything hadn't leaked two days before. We even had the box art, a full feature list, Death Knights, the whole shebang. It was ruined. Was Some things it? never change. <laughs> Alright, so live content updates are pretty cool. Live content updates are cool. But the dev team's been working on something much more special than that. Now, I know there's always rumors on the internet. They know. rumors on the internet and thinks they know what I'm about to talk about. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Hey, keep your hands up. Your accounts are all banned. <laughs> That's back whenever they could have fun at BlizzCon. You know why? Death Knights Hero Class. What does it mean? I don't know. Death Knights Death Grip. Death with Decay. Death Reroll. I almost rerolled DK. Die. I probably should have. Before that, though, was the Wrath pre-event. Depending on who you ask, though, it was either amazing or the worst thing ever. My mom almost quit the game over this. Opinion, this was the best thing ever. She almost quit the game over it. I can only imagine the amount of 
cringe spam from gamers who get uncomfortable at anything slightly out of the ordinary. Here we go. The there it is. The T-Rest. Cities were overrun with undead. Players were able to turn any other player into a mindless zombie at will. So for a little while, the major cities were annoyed. Everything was Maybe dead. Maybe I was being harsh this on those who hated so it, but good. honestly, it fit the theme of an well, unstoppable Well, yeah, it was. It was great. Really, really well. There was nothing you could do to prevent the spread, which was the fucking point and the eeriness of walking over literally yes. hundreds of corpses. It was a sight to behold. However, the complaining was rife. The people could not be without their auction house. And the event was cut short. <laughs> Blizzard pulled the plug early. Too and many this babies. All lasted, and its historical rage lasted for five days. Was it really only five, five days? days? And the invasion was over. Blizzard had learned from the TBC launch. Now players had a couple of zones to start their journey. Instead of being funneled into a single zone with no quest mobs, and the zones were interesting. I know it's subjective, nope. but the design of the raft zones. I need zones to sell my level seven items. Particularly Ice Crown and the Storm cloth. Peaks. Talk of the Storm Peaks then, what a tremendous idea. Flying existed, and it wasn't this creative burden it is today, so they embraced it. They locked it it's off before to Blizzard hated flying. Not only via the skill being unavailable, but by geographically sealing off the later zones until you gained flying. Similar to how they locked off the floating city until midway through leveling. With that in mind, That's actually true. I never thought of that. and Ice Crown were fully designed with flying as a feature, with the enormous looming and imposing towers ominously. This is how flying should be right here. We haven't seen anything like this since the, since then, especially with the efforts Pretty of Blizz to actually remove flying. I really wish they would re-embrace this feature of the game. Instead of trying to lock it in the basement. Just think about Northrend's overall world design. I guarantee it carries more memorable locations in the minds of players than any That's other continent, band. including the Broken yeah. Isles. Be it the traversal into Cold Ara, the gorgeous, intricate spire of Dragonblight, contrasted wonderfully by the blighted land surrounding it, or simply the menacing presence of Naxxramas and the other citadels floating over the tundras. Then take all that and put it smash face up against the cheeky little bastard that is the Grizzly Hills. Do you remember the music? The best what zone in the game. ridiculous is this in comparison to the grimy pestilence everywhere else? Grizzly Hills, best that zone game period ever. Style design. It was worth two Besides Red Ridge Mountains pre, uh, pre cut it. Wrath brought in the first real in-game cutscenes to advance the story. That's right. The Wrathgate is a must-see for any player, but good God, the real sadness. The real sadness! And some of you won't even know this exists until now and will never unknow it. Anyone who started Kata, or after, is that they removed something. What is widely oh, yeah. considered the best quest Blizz ever made. I don't know about that. It was really this cool was though. This was such a major moment of standing side by side with the leaders while taking the role of a wave crashing against a seemingly unstoppable enemy. I remember this shit. A this is fucking amazing. Lost history for us lucky few. Yet yeah, Blizz has gone to great lengths successfully to replicate this style of moment. So yeah, They've they tried. nailed the leveling experience. But this time they gave real thought to what happens after the cap, which up until now had meant players Different instantly pointing away to begin the gear grind and make the But bits, thank you. Ice Crown was the jewel. It was understood that most players would hit cap very, very early into Ice, Ice Crown. Ice Crown sucks. So instead of just having it be a bunch of the usual quests for a rainy day, Ice Why Crown did had they the remove this quest, by the way? best story quest the in the revamp. entirety of Wrath. And each step also unlocked the dailies to keep it relevant for the entirety of the expansion. Yep. Whether you were controlling Arthas himself, or in the pursuit of raising Syndragosa, or standing side by side with Darian Mograine inside the Ice Crown Chapel, preparing for the inevitable storming of ICC. So if you weren't around at launch, you're probably thinking Wrath was just an incredible, incredible time. 25th of November. A date. A guild name. Soon to be called Insidia. The first mega guild, the merger of SK and Nihilum. The two top boys yep, of TBC we were go. to drop some players and become raiding gods. I think 50, I appreciate that. 66 I might hours take that. into the launch of much. Wrath, all the raid content was dead. What? I wanted to check this forum post. That's how easy it champion. was. Read the hate, the vitriol, and flat out lies and crazy stories posted by the community at this moment. Now, while that in itself, I'll be honest, that's not unusual, uh, notice the actual funny part. The thread completely dies as soon as reports came in that pugs of everyone else who had also hit level cap from various servers had also started clearing the content. 
That's how fucking now, while easy the it was. The armchair and inform bumfucks voices were quelled until their next rage meal was prepared. Those of us in the raiding world were soon to discover that something had gone very, very wrong with Wrath of the Lich King's raiding. I don't think it was that bad. The great spellweaver crushed. Southarian, Dunked, and of course, the return of Naxxramas, which was pretty much a welcome feature, honestly. It was the first revamped content ever, so we didn't know what was in store, and Nax was fucking amazing. Those That's who true. went there thought it was so good. It had a legacy all of its own. A it was bad? I don't know if it was. Like, McCollum, do you think that was bad that the raid content got cleared that fast? Uh, I've always thought that raid content should be should be extremely hard and if like it should be pretty much every raid should be like classic next like only the top of the top you gotta farm for fucking days and hours to get all the shit necessary to go in there and kick some ass and if you can't do that you shouldn't be a fucking raider you should be a fucking loser farming fucking bgs or some some shit I feel that is what raiding should be it's for neckbeards only but like Nax, like those raids weren't hard. It just took forty people. That was the only reason they were hard. Well, so what? That's still hard. I, I mean, don't we know, had man. this discussion. We, we talk, already had yeah, this. this... Uh, that's you're right. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think we just have, we have yeah, a difference of opinion. We have a difference yeah. of opinion yeah. here. I think raiding should be easier. I, I think this was obviously this raid tier was a little bit too easy. But in general, I, I think raiding could be easier. I'd be completely fine with that. Okay. Or if and, they don't want to do that. If they don't want to make it neckbeards only, how about you just, what about just one 40-man raid? Like, just, just one, you get all the boys oh. together one night, you fucking go in, it's hard as shit, you oh. get everybody, people are people are drunk, they're fucking drunk, they're yammering over Discord, and they're fucking yeah. having fun, oh. everybody's having fun, you're doing it with the boys, everybody, oh. all the, dude, well, that's what sorry. they should do. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. A legacy that was cultivated and fostered mainly though by those who never went inside like it or not inaccessibility breeds desire you hear that imagination speculation blizzard they all run wild just as it had done in the past what does it feel Apparently like not. to actually see ragnaros rise out of the lava don't get me wrong i have no issue with concept being accessible to all but i do believe it doesn't have to be immediate and unfulfilling so that all that excitement and anticipation is just pissed Look at that away. UI, man. Nax 2.0 was a total failure in the eyes of Raiders. But a success to those who lived in the Pug world, while That's also true. being a nice introduction for new players. Yeah, but the achievements, mate, they were the real challenge. Yeah, Immortal was pretty hard. Oh, yes. And the and through Drake's. Feature. We needed that, and it has to be put to good use, am I right? Yep. I told this that all the true. time from those with the rose-tinted team. The base raid was the easy mode. The achieves were the hard mode. Yep. Yeah, uh, but that's literally only true for Southaria and his three drakes. Hell, everyone was amazed when Method released the info that, contrary to Blizzard's statements, that 10 was designed to be easier than 25, that in fact Southaria three drakes 10-man was actually the most difficult challenge in Wrath of the Lich King. That's well, true. that's the only... The I never did it in, in Nax. Of the achievement I got kicked true. out because I got hit I by a firewall too many times. It's the title I wear on every character, no yep. matter what overwhelming challenge I defeat in World of Warcraft. I love it so much. Was I was it a hard? dummy. Not in the traditional sense. If you think to yourself, hard. It's hard asking people with bad PCs or internet to stand outside the room on Thaddeus and Hygen, then yeah. It's tough. That was me. Or hoping the mind controllers don't have something happen on Resuvius. Or having to raid at midnight. That was me. Huge lag in the instances. Then you could call it hard. Malagos's yeah. achievement were complete bullshit. Bring a load of ranged DPS and some death knights. Stack yep. up sparks and go bleh. That isn't Kill Malagos in under six minutes. Team effort or strategy. How did this happen? How do you take something as legendary as Naxxramas and just remove its soul? Let me ask you something. So why is a wrath baby? So we asked around, and the common belief is that a wrath baby is simply someone who started playing WoW in Wrath of the Lich King. Wrong. 
A wrath baby was in Wrong. fact a really derogatory term used to describe those really who derogatory? either loved the new wrath model or indeed started in wrath and never understood the hardships and trials that the now self-titled old school had been through. That's true. Wrath is a major turning point in WoW's gameplay. A turning point we are still feeling today. It was the point where overall things were made much much easier. When they made the Tanks, game for, for the example, masses. now had an enormous threat multiplier added that wasn't fully disclosed in a strange way. A simple googling will find a number of sites trying to figure out exactly how huge this invisible buff was. Needless to say, if you were tanking in vanilla or the Verdi Crusade, then Wrath made it very trivial. Not Wrath to was whenever that tanking was actually fun. I hated no tanking in BC and vanilla. Two or three enemies, Suck dick. With reducing the raid size, changing class mechanics, removing some of the of the more evil original mechanics, and being that the bosses were designed for a game that was years old. Yeah. No. Nax was pretty shitty with all these things combined. This is always the issue with revamped content and why the new Karazhan not being a total revamp is a very exciting prospect. Old content is just that. It's old. It was designed around a different game. And as the game develops, that old People have better abilities and shit. That's the main thing. The new hole. Meaning that in all likelihood, it's not going to be as good compared to when it was created. We should have seen it coming. So early on in Wrath, you were likely to be in one of two camps. If you were a player who had done some well, then Wrath became a snorefest very, very quickly. But for everyone else, yeah. it was pretty fucking awesome, honestly. The new world dailies were fantastic. Thought Wrath was great. More creative than the Burning Crusade. Leaping up a mountain as a mini Mimiron robot never got old, just as helping two seals find the love they deserved was a welcome twist on the usual Collect X reputation uh. quest we'd seen in the past. So what about PvP, boys? Winter Grasp? Winter Grasp was terrible, but it was the best one we've ever had. That's the truth. Winter Grasp was literal dog shit. Oh, question marks? Here's what Winter Grasp was for Kel'Thuzad. Because oh, Kel'Thuzad, no, you know, no, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna 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 tell. Yeah, because they don't fucking remember. Because, because they don't fucking remember. Because they don't fucking remember. You're such a fucking crybaby. No, I'm not crying. I'm, I'm not. That's the opposite. I'm saying the opposite. Wrath of the Lich King, like, all right, ro fucking Winter Grasp on Kel'Thuzad was eight different tanks spamming the demolition attack at the graveyard for the horde to where as soon as the horde player would spawn they would be immediately fucking killed by like 15 different artillery rounds that are being shot at them every half second and we there was never a time that horde didn't the horde ever had voa it was hilarious it's really funny as Alliance, it was great. So Halal was a bit... Fucking sucked! But not the idea yeah. of a mass battle trying to recapture the classic Alterac Valley in itself. Well, that's, no, that's alright. So Winter Grasp was the next effort. An all-out assault on the fortress Better using than tanks Halal. and well-mounted turrets, catapults, and destructible walls with the ultimate reward of super easy Pokemon bosses that gave PvE and PvP raid quality gear. That you can ninja loot. The concept. The design. 120v120. So good, actually. So reality. If we can't, I should post some of my videos <laughs> as a species, then. after a decade, convince just 10 players to not camp the middle of Warsong Gulch, then what do you think happens when you throw 240 players into a sandbox? Was it 240? Every now and again, there would be what an amazing battle in Wintergrasp. Being on the defensive was always much more fun for me, more specifically on the defensive in a pretty evenly matched fight, but losing. The walls get on crashing the down as the enemy tanks rolled in, flanked by troops on the ground, making that final push through the gates of the keep. Very cool. Unfortunately, most of the time there would be this enormous testicle. Wizard should make this a uh, main gate, getting battered a rumble. with turret fire, and then running back to their corner. It's coming back, just actually. Just waiting for someone else. Great to idea, do Blizzard. Something which would let You're them welcome. win, and then someone will make a group for the raid bosses. Yep. You get the idea. A hundred toys to play with, but not playing is preferable to so many. Strand Who the ancients, would go AFK? The other new BGs. Of course, vehicle combat was back. What the fuck was going on with vehicle combat in Wrath of the Lich King? It was great. The devs seem to have such a boner for it. Maligos, Wintergrass, Strand, Flay Leviathan, Oculus. 
Got to get that vehicle combat in there. I never minded it too much, but in practice, we had those immediate flashbacks to Terran Garfine in the Black Temple. We all know those guys who are presented with three or four buttons and turn from some of the better players you've ever known to someone who resembles my dog with the Wii U pad. Players complained a lot of what they said was endless vehicle combat. They can't you know, handle the five it. cases I just mentioned. And three of them were PvE and two of them were PvP. Just endless, I say. Flame Leviathan was an I'm awesome sure most fight. Of the Anybody that disagrees that so is wrong. Just couldn't get their fancy add-ons to work when inside a vehicle. How do I track Pyrite again? So You're as so it was dumb, the closest dude. we it's got sad. to vehicle combat, after that was tremendous and wonderful. The beautiful gunship battle. But come on. At least we got leaping from a gunship down in the enemy base as a normal function of the game. That's a win right there. No. Oh. Which one was this? Oh, this one was so bad. This is the worst cinematic ever. And we're back in the game. The old Oasis cinematic looks dated as hell now. I can't yes. even tell if it was intentional that his face looks like Gordon Ramsay's ass. But the little previews Wait, what of what the fuck it does across that broken bridge, we had all seen by now just looked incredible. My balls clenched when I saw that it was going to be so large it had its own train. The train ride from Stormwind to Ironforge is so good and now we were going to have another, perhaps even better one? It's just Titans, dragons, a mysterious presence, enormous robots, and for the first time in history, a secret, super secret, hard mode only boss. Just what the hell is this going to be? You really need to appreciate how amazing Ulduar, for a variety of reasons, was. It was the best First, raid ever. First, the design of it. The detail on the By architecture in every corner of the zone is some of the best we had ever seen. There are no bare sections that look like they could do with just a little bit here, a little bit more. Frozen halls, a forest. Just look at the scope of the room that is just for Mimiron alone. From start to finish, it played out as it should, as a full-on assault. We weren't simply strangers in a foreign land like we usually were inside a raid, but now the place was designed to play out, with us as invaders blowing down doors, disabling the outer defenses. Secondly, the voice acting. Ulduar gave it's us It's weird to think how good this. this was. I'm ready to play! Your will is no longer your own. How can you not love this? This is the best we had seen since Karazhan. The model itself. Ask yourself, how many different I can level never of like difficulties Karazhan. are there for Ulduar? Two. Just two. It is, Ten I, I and can't. twenty-five. That's it. Within those two, two simple restrictions was content designed for pugs all the way up to the most hardcore players on the That's planet. right. The ability to have the choice per boss as to whether you wanted to try it harder or easier and many yep. stages in between for some bosses a chance at those couple of extra decent items or simply do it in the easier mode and do a different harder one later without just sticking the entire raid into normal hard it's amazing let's say you're a pugger got a bunch of low geared guys all right we'll do normal mode all the way a mixed group with some experience and some newbies maybe you do xt hard but the rest normal, or a very well geared group. That's actually really cool. Mode. I never Python, thought about that. Yeah. XT maybe Thorim or Hoda, which honestly almost any guild could kill Flame in Leviathan in at least. while still being able to do the whole almost. thing normal instead is great. By today's standards, using the Ulduar model, there could be simply be normal and mythic. Probably still Alpha though. It doesn't even make much sense that normal and heroic even exist anymore. When the opportunity That's actually exists true. to be more creative with boss design. That's very while fucking people true. Choice. Look at Hellfire Citadel, for example, using the old War model. Iron Reaver could split in two, similar to Marchok, and using artillery to switch DPS targets in a similar vein to the Twin Emperors of Arn Karaj. Hellfire Listen Council these could ideas. have a different order, which we can all agree would certainly mix up the strategy, and so on and so on. We sat down and couldn't think of any See? reason why the old War setup was a problem. But as we'll find out, yeah, it totally fucking was, apparently. Despite Algalon being visually striking, yet disappointing, Ulduar cemented its place in history as one of the best raid zones they've ever created. So it was justifiable to create something people absolutely fucking hated. 
Just under five months have passed since the gem oh, of Ulduar had appeared. No. We had all seen the construction of the Argent tournament grounds going oh, on in the north of Iceground, and then suddenly no. the announcement of not just another I raid, like but new raid. No, you course, don't. A do brand yes, new I do. I like this. No, shut up. The attempts at making everything accessible was already starting to show how hard Blizzard was having it. No matter how cool or inventive they were in opening the doors wide for as many people as possible, without making the content so trivial no one would reasonably enjoy it, nothing was working. No matter what you do, there will always be people who prefer the previous system. But Blizzard was not going to give up, not just yet. The raid this and dungeon where they did system was and changed in heroic. every major patch of Wrath of the Lich King. To toggle on. And this time, they really screwed it up. The beginning of the end. It. Trial of the Crusader was a good raid. It was solid. As a one-off no. raid with no trash, with a quirky theme and a few interesting bosses, and yes, I even enjoyed the faction champions. I it didn't. should have been a nice addition to the legendary grind we were going shit. to do in Ulduar. Once the short progress of TOC was done, as it should do, it would take less than an hour for an experienced guild. So how do you screw that up? Four lockouts a week. With the fancy new toggle ability, we had 10 normal, 10 heroic, 25 normal, 25 heroic. What a joke. Only if that you was were fully geared for you all our hard modes could you skip over you even all the normal there, 10 man version. Everything else was upgraded. You do it with your own. All the while, not missing an Ulduar reset. Gotta get those Valneers. It also meant that due to the short time it took between Ulduar and TOC launch, that for a huge amount of people, Ulduar had come to an end. Only to be replaced by repeated runs of Trial of the Crusader in its place. TOC replaced Old War as a minor much, relief, entirely. The release of TOC was staggered. Was fucking one awful. new boss every week until finally the reinvigorated Anubarak, and once again, Mr. Menethil, made yet another appearance. As a side note, this was the raid that brought the name Paragon to everyone's minds as the guild getting the world first heroic 25 kill following a storming I don't performance remember that at all. from Alone in the Darkness. Damn. TOC was a huge misstep as players How were burning out fast shit? while simultaneously putting Old War into the back seat. The new daily area was interesting, but it was the new five mans that caused the most uproar. When we went back to fully film them, I couldn't quite wrap my head around how long the RP is. It's cool and all, but it took so long before you could do anything. They had to add Once an again, extra button admit, to skip it I was all. a fan of the That's jousting, and a super fan of the Black Knight being the final boss, but oh my the god, Black those Knight. trinkets. TOC Five Man Heroic became ground zero. It was the most ninja looted place in their history of WoW. Was it? An add-on. All right, boys. I need was one more really? DPS for Shattered Hall's heroic. You know the drill. Ooh. Stand together. Let's have a look at you. It was, wasn't okay. it? Okay. Okay. Well, this is quite obvious, isn't it? One of you is exceptional. The other one looks like he needs help getting dressed in the morning. It's you, son. You've got the higher gear score. Let's go. Wait, how is there two of them All right, the so screen? gear score or just item level, as you know it today, is just a commonly accepted thing, and I covered it more in depth in this video here. The takeaway is that before this cursed add-on appeared, and quite literally became as standard as a DPS meter, it changed everything. It's not as if- I'm gonna pause this real quick, I gotta take another piss, I'll be right back. Gear score was great. It's, uh, it's been about an hour or so. Go ahead and subscribe with twitch prime go ahead and start gifting subs um and uh go ahead and uh mm, i don't know 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. You guys are so weird, dude. You guys are so fucking weird, man. Yo, how mad? How mad are you guys that I'm I'm still hanging out with Asmund on this stream? Like you guys are still so mad. It's so it's so sad. Isn't it sad, dude? Isn't it sad? In what said? All right, go ahead. Go, what? What isn't what said? I don't know, dude. I tried to call up to fucking sneak up on you to hear what the hell you were saying. 
I couldn't I, I couldn't hear any of it though. Cheese Puffs Invader Jim Zim, thank you guys both for the uh for the gifted subs. I really fucking appreciate that guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Finding groups was more friendly before this, or people didn't inspect you, etc. The difference now is that you could be flat out excluded before any dialogue was opened up. When someone says something innocent like needing 5k gear score to do a previous expansion raid or some other insane nonsense, then it's not only the people who are looking to do that content who are excluded, but everyone else who sees that message in trade and doesn't meet the requirement also gets the message that you are not good enough to join in with yeah, that content they suck even if dick. you wanted to. Gear score was player made though. That they was brought great. That themselves. That With was that, good. It was the great but weird decisions that created the unstable ride. I Dual love Gear Score. was brought into the game. Amazing. After two expansions being locked into specs with ever absurd prices to change and play something just a little bit yep. different. I mean, I just want to play my character without being reamed out for it. No. Of course, though, when dual spec did arrive, also the most ridiculous comment ever came, which was that tri spec would never be a thing as that would destroy the RPG aspect. See, two specs is fine, but well, three, what about a fucking immersion? That's true. Is that a Nixie? It's a fucking revamp. Oni did come back. It was a decent revamp back I forgot all about nice this. nice new mechanics to combat the changes that screwed up Nax. This shit was easy. But still a weird decision considering the backlash from Nax. What maybe, the fuck maybe, would you bring out on Nixie Oni again? came back as just a test to see if they added a lot of modern tweaks to the old gal, no. if it would work. Inscription, guild calendars, equipment managers, and of course, the most requested feature of all time, trumping achievements and all the other nonsense and everything else we'd seen in Wrath was the barbershop. Fucking barbershop. Mm -hmm. right. uh, what? It sucks. Don't be dissing the barbershop, mate. Yeah? You need it, fucking casual. Stick to your guides. Wow. Mother. So it's time. We've done the story, we fought Here the masses of undead, and now we have Real forced shit, Arthas boys. from appearing in every cutscene. There it is. After all the returning players had stuck it out for so long, and ridden oh. this roller coaster of change, it was time to descend on ICC. Which also meant, of course, changing the raid system again. But well, we'll get to that. This was the day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> December 8th, 2009. This was the day the Kalawak fishing derby came to WoW. Wait, what? And LFD. Wait, what? As someone who was there and was a tank, I thought LFD was the shit. Instantaneous was cues great. and I had the gear score to carry they the never group, added so it, from my very in-depth, experienced point of view, LFD was just aces, a brava. I was a fucking My guild chat, this. though, kept banging on about hour-long queues, crap yep. tanks, crap healers, wiping, and that lots of players were completely the worst players they had ever seen. Groups that couldn't right. even finish the dungeon. Um, let me try my DPS alt then. Oh. Oh no. Oh. That guy just runs in and fucking dies. The thing is, many would sit back today and say, well, LFD destroyed the player base, right? People just overnight became so much worse than ever before. No. The fact is, you just weren't exposed to these players before. Let's make a simple comparison. Right. How many people refuse to make their own groups, but will endlessly complain about the requirements of someone else's group? Now, take all the way to players who wow, flat that out refuse familiar. to join into any other content with other players in yes. an MMO. All right? Now, take that mindset. Aggressive Multiply bads. it by the time it takes to not be anonymous in any way and dedicating lots of time to finding a five-man group as we had done previously. That is a huge, huge amount of players who you never, ever interacted with in any way whatsoever. Thank who in God. all likelihood have little to no experience, and now they have an option to queue up using the minimum effort and also have anonymity to remain completely safe. Yep. Basically, LFD opened the floodgates to the apparent millions of players you never knew existed. And but you don't want to know they exist. They either. always existed. I'll say it was funny to start finding people who no longer knew where the dungeon entrances were and couldn't corpse run without getting lost after most likely causing the wipe. That was pretty funny. So while yeah. we're on the five minds then, the Forge of Souls, the Pit of Sour, and the Halls of Reflection had joined the dungeon list. 
Oh, the most geez. interesting thing about these dungeons is that all three were a linear story, all, all connected of together, one after the other. After the initial intrusion that was really to ICC, fun. we would break in, set up camp, having the initial forces imprisoned into slavery, all the while working from scout reports that the Halls of Reflection held some secret as to how Pit to defeat Ron Arthas. Is fucking awesome, though. As much as I'm not a law nerd, the big the question one. was flying around since the announcement of Ice Crown Citadel. How exactly did you defeat this bro? The Five Mans were some of the best, not only being visually interesting, but the story and culmination of Arthas, chasing you all the way to the ending. It was so cool. The twist that defeating Arthas only meant that someone else had to replace him would lead to wild speculation, mostly targeted at Tyrion to become the next Lich King. So back to yet more changes though. As TOC was intended to be a nice little side distraction, but turned into a burden laden yeah, grind everyone fest, from Olduwar that it was why the they had to ever. switch it up again. Now we had a toggle, allowing players to change between heroic and normal on a boss by boss basis, while still keeping 10 and 25 separate. So essentially, a far less creative Olduwar. This was also the culmination of Blizzard's interference with guild progression. Here we go. For some reason, since the, the Locked Mid Wings. Crusade, this was Blizzard so great. seemed to feel they owed a duty of care to players who would raid non-stop hardcore from the get-go. Why? Who the fuck knows? Limited time on Algalon. One boss a week for TOC and ICC would have one wing released per reset, as well as limited attempts for the end of wing bosses. It was a double whammy in ICC. Limited Probably attempts. Also the that was a they great decided mechanic. It was a dumb idea. As the hardcore of the hardcore will always find a way around it, either by soul stoning entire raids or simply leveling and gearing multiples of their own character to test bosses before using up the attempts on their main characters. Either way, in we went. Great and mechanics. They it. This was a very big deal. Like Deathwing to Cataclysm, the expansion was built around this one zone. Personally, I always consider the visuals to have been the best part of ICC. The bosses, for the most part, were pretty lame for they me as a mechanics nerd. They suck dick. Just say it, Blood preach. Queen, Putricide, Syndragosa, fantastic. Excluding the yeah. big man, I never got any significant memories from anything else. While Blood Princess and Valithria were some of the ones I thought were annoying, ICC overall was just a nice place to be in. None of that mattered, though. You'd hope no one so. Gave a shit you spent a whole that. year there. It was all about Arthas, and my god. Standing on that platform for the first time, Seeing him sat on the throne, staring down at us, knowing it was about to go down. Ooh. The countdown with Tyrion shows that even long RP Ooh. doesn't have to be a chore like Saofang. That's right. The tension surrounding those last few seconds was great, no matter how many times you wiped. So I'm sure I don't need to go attack. over how the fight plays out for anyone watching this. But what I can relate is the absolute elation and delight of that first progression kill. With Arthas floating as we all got res to bring him down, followed by Bolvar taking up the mantle, complete with a new statue in Dalaran for non raiders to see what happens. The nubs. Now for the bullshit then. That's what the they biggest do outrage that came out of ICC wasn't to that click a on. disciplined Fuck priest em. was fundamentally required to counter Arthas' most destructive spell infest, yep. it was when it came to the heroic modes. You see, the system still worked that 10 man was easier than 25. So there was the loot power difference. 25 got stronger loot. By this point, there was more dedicated 10-man guilds than 25. I wonder With the why. content being easier to play and easier to set up, that growing voice became very, very, very pissed with the perceived unfair benefits that 25-man players were getting. To really sting them in the tail, though, the world first Lich King heroic 10 kills, the realm first that the 10-man guilds have been working their balls off on. They were pretty much all done by the 25-man guilds. That's because it was all the about the precious rankings, of course. But it does seem honestly unfair that their progress, the 10-man dedicated, was stomped all over by overgeared players from 25-man just walking in and crushing it. That's right. At least we know that eventually the arguments right. between 10 and 25 would find harmony and peace, singing songs and sharing hot dogs at the weekend. That's sarcasm, by the way. That wasn't the end of Wrath of the Lich King raiding, though. It was also Halion. Hey, everybody. This is my conclusion to Halion. the video. So there are lots of things we have to leave out of this because it's already way, way too long. So Flower Power, uh, Anubarax Achievement, Gotta Go, that had to be dropped out. And a few other that things. That was so dog shit, too. I didn't know about them, but I didn't think they were really relevant to the memory as most of those things got changed anyway.
The focus of the end of Wrath of the Lich King was really strange. It was a period of time where in PvP, casters dominated and we had Wizard Cleave and overpowered trinkets and all that kind of stuff. So people were just getting blown up in PvP. In the PvE world, it was... Was he reading the script right there? Legendaries, getting those Shadow I wonder. Ones, getting those Valneas, just getting all these stuff. People. That's fucking Nimrod's funny. head was a big one. I never scripted out any of my time, videos. Invincible and so on and so forth. Getting all these things for everybody. And it was an ambivalent time. As I remember it, as somebody who played through the entire thing, is I remember it being an ambivalent time. Wrath of the Lich King was a strange one. It wasn't as exciting as the end of Vanilla was, where we were looking forward to this big new expansion. And then uh, the first expansion, where we'd never experienced it before. We didn't know what was going to happen. It shows. Or, or Fuck exhausting. Off. I genuinely did want to quit the game when Wrath of the Lich King was coming out. That is absolutely true. The beginning of this video is really? completely true. I never uh, did. It was exhausting. We had the hardest raid content ever with the Sunwell, which did nearly kill my guild multiple times. They had to take massive breaks. And it was difficult and a chore. And uh, you had to fight through it all. And the end of Wrath of the Lich King was kind of like, we've seen this process before. The Kata trailer dropped. And instead of being like, oh my fucking God, like a lot of people who'd left the game saw. When people were just relieved. TV, for many of us who had been through the entire expansion, it was another big bad. That probably won't have any effect on the world at all. As you've probably noticed through the many WoW expansions, is nothing really changes. And we were starting to see that a gear reset once again, more levels, same same new stuff, just repeating over. But we still loved the game. It just wasn't exciting like the Burning Crusade was. It wasn't, you know, with Deathwing Burning Stormwind was cool, but it wasn't as cool as like, oh shit, Arthas is coming or the Burning Legion, because it had, been, it had happened to us a couple of times before. That. I guess so. so yeah. So my final memories of Wrath of the Lich King, uh, I could say this without a shadow of a doubt. There are far more players who remember Wrath of the Lich King as probably their favorite expansion ever. And I totally get that. I Wrath think most people would say Wrath is their favorite. It started the accessibility train. So a lot of people, huge amounts of people got to experience the train wreck. like raiding for the very first time because obviously raiding was made much simpler in many ways. Uh, gameplay became much simpler, so people TV. weren't excluded from content mm. anymore, right? So people who were scared to tank could go in and tank now because that process was much, much easier. It was for me and my friends who, uh, who would fall into like, oh, you're elitist because you used to do it the old school way, right? I made the joke about the old school in the video. Bring back elitism. Uh, no, it's just that we were playing a different game. We were playing a game a better where game. you had to do some really stupid, over-the-top hardcore things that's right in order to get to where you wanted to go and that was being yep. taken away and for many of us wrath of the lich king was actually a different type of game for the first time and that's why we always felt a little bit salty about it i wasn't as salty as everyone else calling over a scrub lord or a wrath baby or anything like I that was. i wasn't that much of a dick but i knew where we were coming from which was we were used to a different kind of game well i think for the vast majority of people wrath of the lich king was probably their favorite ever expansion so, uh, as we did with the Legacy of the Burning Crusade, we have a little music video prepared for you. Mr. Ghosty's made this one. He's quite happy with it. I hope you enjoy it. And also, this video is entirely supported video. by Patreon. Okay, so the guys over at Patreon get this video like a week early as well as the other legacies. Now we have two of us on board. Uh, we will be producing many, many Oh yeah, more that is my these. same backpack. So yeah, you're right. It's a process. Right there. Uh, as I labored over this one until Ghosty came in and we managed to wrap it up very, very quickly. So, we're going to be producing hopefully one every couple of weeks. We have a quite a few that are already out so you can look at a lot of legacy of wild the burning crusade vanilla uh and several I, I i do feel like that was a good video though like um overall i think raf probably it was one of the best times in my life before i say like anything else beyond that i think it was one of the best times in my life beyond anything else